Good morning. Today we'll be discussing operating system threats and in particular issues that we face when we want to use threats. Right. Now, of course, there are many benefits if you want to um, use multiple threads or multiple processes. You get a lot of speed up if you can design it properly. Uh, you can make things more efficient. You can use more resources. Let's utilize your resources properly. So instead of having just one core working on your program, if you have multiple threads or multiple processes, you could split up the work across different um, different processes or more devices or use up a lot more hardware. So we can also utilize our hardware. Right? So these are just a few of the benefits. right? But before you get these benefits, there are many issues that do come up if you want to get the benefits that are listed. Right? So the first thing you have to do is you need to identify the tasks or the things that you can make parallel or that you can use threads with. Right? So for example, in class, we talked about having um, a, a workload where we're trying to figure out which numbers are prime numbers. So we have to determine what things can we spread out over multiple processes. Right? For the quiz that I give today, the quiz said if you have an email client, an email client, um, what are some of the things that you would do to utilize multiple threads? So you have to look at it and say, well, if I have an email client, um, what does an email client do? Maybe it, it gets email, it sends email, and I also compose email. And while composing email, I may want to scan the email for, um, let's say, errors and grammar. I may want to also search for contacts. Right. So this means that these are all things in terms of identifying tasks that an email client could do, could make more parallel. So instead of just using um, one process to get email, someone could decide, well, I could send off one thread to get email for today, another one to get email from yesterday. You could uh, sort of do that, right? Have multiple connections. Some of the download managers that you have uh, use these features. So instead of downloading just one part of a file, they could have two or three threads downloading different parts of the file so that it has multiple connections and it can later put these parts together. Even for sending mail, you could have many, compose many emails and then what you would have to do is send different threads. One thread is sending the first email, second thread sending the second email and so on and so forth. Composing email, instead of just locking up, you could have multiple windows that you are composing email with. Checking errors even if you have written your email before it's sent or even as you are typing, one thread could be checking your errors for email, searching for contacts. And you see this a lot when you type the email or the name of a person in the to or from. You see it starts to search. That could be done with threads so that you could be typing um, your email, doing other tasks in your email client. So the first task that we need to do, one of the main issues that we need to handle when trying to determine how to utilize threads or use more processes is to identify the tasks. All right. The second thing, if we have identified the tasks, is to split up the work or split up the data. All right. Now, in the textbook, they tend to um, they've they've sort of they put under two points, but I'll, I'll cover them in about the same way. All right. So, if you have work to do maybe getting email right you could decide well I could get um, split up the work into um, new email for one week and new email older than one week right so any task that you have um, in a program, you could try and split it up a bit. 
right? Or even if you are sending email, that was another one I talked about. Maybe you are sending email, right? You could have two threads. One sends the first email, that's where the person has several emails that they have composed and they have sent, but are in the sent box. You could just split it up and say, well, um, the threads could just pick them off. So a thread could just randomly pick one of the emails to send and send it off, or just pick the one which um, you saved first to send off, right? So splitting work, that is the main thing that we do. So for the one that we had in class with the prime numbers, what I said was, you actually make a file and you break it up you more or less just split evenly right so splitting work is the other task that you have to perform is, is an issue so it's a design choice well engineering issue that you have to perform if you're dealing with multiple processes or multiple threads right. the third one is balance balance is very tricky and balance means trying to make sure that all your different threads are working and making use of the resources so for example if you have a dual core machine right and one processor is running at 50 percent and the other one is running at one uh, percent that means you are not really utilizing um, your cores it would be nicer if if you had a workload you could split it off if you got something around in this case uh, 25 percent 26 percent that is a good balance right so in terms of balance you mean splitting up the work so that the different threads do about the same amount of work right now this is um, can be important for response time you don't want just one thread or one process to be doing all the work and the others just um, sort of slacking off not doing anything right so if you balance it off then you can have better utilization of your resources right so for sending email so the email client that we talked about to balance that means that if I have different threads, some doing sending of email, some doing um, checking contacts, some for composing the email, right? Some for getting or retrieving email, right? Then what I want to do is make sure that it's not just all the workload 100% is being done by get mail I should make it such that I split up the work all right so I get well some some of the work uh, some of this you can get just by uh, making threads and having them go off right now in class we are not really struggling with balancing work right but sometimes you might have to start and stop threads maybe even pause them and to have control the workflow so that all the work isn't just being done by a few threads right especially in the case for example where in class we're trying to use um, uh, finding prime numbers right now we we don't want it to be just one thread is finding all the prime numbers if we have 10 threads it would be nice to have the work split out so that one person doesn't have to do all the work right so that's what we mean by balance and balancing is also done um, in many uh, real life events right so for example if you are you have a website a web server you would like to balance the work so that different clans have reasonable response time you don't want to make it such that only when one person is browsing does he get response time and the other people slow down so balance is the next issue that we talk about right now another issue that is related to data that was um, two slides below that's when you split up the data very closely related issue is data dependency right. in that sometimes you need one task to finish before you can complete the next task or sometimes you need data from one uh, process before you get data for the next process in the quiz that I gave you today I asked you what are some of the issues if you have an email client now for an email client that is getting email that's for the email client getting email sending email and while people are composing mail right one of the things it has to do it has to search for contacts it has to do grammar checks right. depending on the email client that you're using while you are composing it needs to be able to search for contacts and check grammar before the email gets sent so it means that the two things could be 
things that send email depends on. Your current uh, Microsoft Outlook client works like that. It seems when you are searching, if it hasn't finished verifying the email addresses, you will not be able to send. So it means that sometimes there is a dependency between two threads. One person has to get the data before the other one sends it off. Right. Another common data dependency is, let's say you are browsing a website and you have typed a web address. If there is a thread that gets the files and another thread that actually runs the PHP code, well, the PHP interpreter on the file. Let's say there's a file called index.php. Well done, web tech. So you make index.php. There could be a thread that's just pulling these things into memory. You could have another one that is interpreting the files. Um, that interpret means to run the, the program code. And another one that sends output. So in this case, they are all dependent. One depends on the other, and the other depends on the other. So some tasks, dependency becomes an issue. So if you are working with threads, splitting up the work, you sometimes have to ask yourself, what things depend on other things? Right? Because if you don't do it properly, you could have um, sort of um, it's called a bottleneck. That's usually what happens. That means one, one person who's, or one thread or one process who's being very slow may slow up the others who are using data from him so but sometimes you can't really avoid it right so in the case for example where you need to be able to search the contacts whatever you do you need to search the contacts before in case of outlook sending out the email verifying that the emails are right because it knows well if i send the email before checking it i could have a bounced email so let me at least make sure that the contacts are valid so sometimes there's no getting around it but at least you need to be aware of dependencies if you are uh, creating programs that use multiple processes or multiple threads because the last issue is testing and debugging testing and debugging um, for me I believe you don't have to wait to test before you make good code right from the very beginning we've talked about a few issues that is you need to identify the tasks so you need to do these before you even start to code you need to determine how you are splitting the work not just using trial and error okay let me send this here let me send that there sit down and think of how the program is going to run right you need to think of balance is balance necessary sometimes things just sort themselves out at least with threads you don't you just start the threads and they go off and you let the scheduler handle it right dependencies if they are dependencies do you know about them so if you know about all the different parts of your program then you can test right you can um, debug and test right now to do this usually what I try to come up with uh, to come up with some test cases right so think of some scenarios where you think um, if there was a threading issue it would fail right so, for example, for the um, finding prime numbers from a, a large file, you could, for example, say, well, what if they are just, um, the work is not even. Let's say I have um, four prime numbers to find and three threads. Does it know how to split the work around so everybody gets a fair share? Or is it going to be three, one, and one thread is lazy? So you could come up with a few test cases to think of how does my thread behave or some test cases to figure out how the balance is done right you could also come up with some test cases where there are dependencies of course in our examples there haven't been dependencies often but sometimes there are and that means that you may have to come up with those test cases so for example if you made an email client where you know you need to search for an email before you send it you have to construct that test case and try it out right now some um IDEs do have debuggers where you can watch the thread. So in Java, there is well NetBeans debugger. There is a way to put breakpoints on different lines of code to make it stop, so you can tell where it's got into. And I believe you should be able to view the threads. If you don't know how to do this, please um, can go online, search, and see how NetBeans debugs um, programs. And you can use this for debugging threads. You can do that. That's fine. All right. So this is. 
the end of the discussion on issues with operating system threats and processes. So we are trying to see, well, not just threats and processes. I always say when it comes to operating systems, the things we learn, you can use it for multi-programming, distributed programming. And these things I've talked about actually do cut across those uh, topics. Distributed computing, ubiquitous computing, um, pervasive computing, all of these involve having multiple things happening at the same time. So the things you've learned in OS threats and processes, you can utilize them in these areas. Thank you.